Hi and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I am having a look at Playbox, which I got with my upgrade to Complete 14. If you watch my uh, Summer of Sound video, um, it was one of the main things that I was wanting to get with uh, with the upgrade. So there was Playbox, there was Sequest, and there was Ashlight were the kind of three main things that I wanted to get. The, I've been playing around with Playbox for um, for a few days now. I think it is um, pretty fantastic. It's certainly as good as I thought it was going to be. Um, and if there's one thing that you should buy in this year, Summer of Sound, uh, either buy Playbox on its own because it, it's only 90 quid or you can buy it as part of one of the complete 14 packages. So, so Playbox comes with either the standard or ultimate or collectors um, and you can see that you can get complete 14 standard for um, 270 uh, depending if you've got a complete 14 select. So if you've bought any of the keyboards, uh, Native Instruments keyboards, then you would have got select with that. So you will have an upgrade price, so it should be a bit cheaper than that. But even so, obviously, you're getting an absolute ton of stuff with standard as well. So uh, if you have never seen Playbox, it is, <laughs> it is pretty different from anything that uh, they have done before, really. There is a, a kind of smattering of play series in it, as you'll kind of see. So the kind of main features of Playbox is, is the kind of randomized feature. Um, so you have um, a huge number of chord sets. So there's 200 chord sets that you can use and 900 samples. And you can basically combine these in any kind of way that you want. I'll just give you a bit of an overview of, of what's happening. So this is the kind of uh, the kind of main page that you kind of open up to. And uh, like I said, wherever there's a dice, obviously you can randomize something. So you can randomize this whole preset, which is called Acute Piano. So if you if you click that, it would randomize everything. Generally, that's not the way I've been working, but you can, you can do that. And as you can see at the bottom, you've got chords, samples, and effects, and you can randomize all those as well. So you, you kind of really need a, a Native Instruments keyboard for this. And uh, it's certainly a lot easier if you've got one of the, the ones with the lighted keyboard, uh, because it does use eight specific keys on the keyboard. Um, to play each chord. So that is all you're playing. You're only playing chords. Um, and there's, like I said, there's, dead, there's eight dedicated keys. These are all the chords that have been generated. And you can let, just keep randomizing or you can go in and pick a specific chord pack that you have favorited. Um, and this button at the bottom, if you click that, it will allow you to record in your own chord. Um, so you can actually go in and record a chord set yourself and save that. So that's your kind of samples page. And like I said, it's got... Um, 900 unique samples um, to uh, individual notes in your chord. Um, so if we scroll down, I'll just show you what these are. So this green one is the synths, the kind of foam cushiony one is instruments, the licorice short sorts is bass, uh, the balloons is voice, and the furry one is noise. And then you can actually bring in up to 400 of your own samples. So if you've got old sample packs that you haven't really used for ages, you can drag them into this and uh, it, uh, it'll it kind of um, give you a whole kind of new lease of life. So that is uh, the sample browser. So like I said, you can go in, uh, this is where you can use, there's four user slots, uh, and this is where you kind of drag in your samples. Um, and then this is the effect set. So you've got different effect sets. So you can filter by lo-fi, cinematic, experimental, simple, or user. And you can actually create and save your own effects presets. These controls will change depending on the preset. So this one is sharper, strum, verb, uh, strum octave, drive, and tape. So um, so that is kind of the basics of how it works. So if you have got any play series, you will recognize this because it works the same way. You've got a row of effects and you can swap the order that they are in. There's also an ARP. You can experiment with the XY pad for simple sound design, which is kind of what I normally kind of start off mucking about with that, or roll the dice to discover a world of presets. So you can dive deeper with ARP, strum, and grain effects. So they've got the grain effects from like Farlight um, and uh, to add rhythm and texture and dial in over 50 ambient samples, including sounds of forest, busy stations, and vinyl crackle. Choose from up to 14 high grade effects and experiment with the order of these in your processing chain. So at a glance, uh, it, it says there's uh, 1300 presets, 900 samples, and then that's all the sound categories, which I uh, mentioned earlier. It is only 1.2 gigabyte because it's all just samples. So it's quite small uh, and you can use it in the, the free contact player or uh, version 6.7 or higher or contact ver version 6.7 as well. Um,
so this is uh, complete control and I've got Playbox loaded uh, and as you can see it uh, this is the kind of main page and uh, this is the first preset called Acute Piano. There are th four banks so you've got instruments, supernatural, synths and voices so we're in all banks at the moment. Uh, so I'll just let you hear the first preset just um, so you can see. So on, on my, as you can see on my uh, S49 Mark II, uh, hopefully you can see anyway, um, there are red light aid. So the red lights are the eight keys that you can use. So there's, so there's C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So it goes one full octave from C3 to C4. Uh, and that's it. Uh, so that says you can't play any these the um, black keys do not do anything um, so that is it so that's it it is a bit more useful to um, to have these so you know where you are about and it, it did used to have um, a keyboard you could have up to show you where they were but for some reason it doesn't seem to do that anymore and obviously you can still use the pitch bend and the mod wheel so in, in this for instance in this case the mod wheel is adjusting the bit crush We'll start off with some of the instruments, and I'll just um, see what if I've favourited um, a few. Um, so, uh, for instance, we've got Bathing Puppies, which is worth favouriting just because it's called Bathing Puppies. Right, so if we go to the samples page, you've got a better idea of what's happening. So the, the foam kind of cushion one is the instruments, and the um, as far as I'm concerned, licorice all sorts. Uh, one is the bass. So it depends on the chord set how many of these. So if I change the chords for instance, which is the first thing we can try and do is change the chords, you'll see that that disappears because we're in a different chord set and then other ones come back in. So like I said, it, it will bring in various other rows depending on the chord set. And like I said, if you click on chords, you can see what they are there. And you can go in and change individual chords. You can go up and down. So you could change that to D4 instead of C sharp. And like I said, if you click this bottom, you can record and then record in um, some of your own chords. So I'll, I'll kind of look at that in other videos. You can go in and pick a particular chord if you want, and you can also favorite them as well. Uh, and you can do a search up there. So there's 224 chord sets. Uh, normally what I have been doing is, is changing the samples first, then going into the chord sets, the, and then the effects and then adjusting the macros. If we go back to samples, you can see the main page, you can see what we've got here. So uh, because uh, the XY pad is the first two um, knobs, so you can see you've got uh, the um, sharper and strum. So you can play around with those uh, using the first two um, knobs on your controller and then verb, strum octave, drive and tape. So, um, and then you've got half time. So you can either just click half time off, off and on there, or you can switch it on via the keyboard. And then there's the overall volume. And that's it. And like I said, that's pretty much all, all you kind of need to know. <laughs> uh, like I said, it, it, it is actually really quite simple. Once you kind of, you know, once, you, once you've played around with it for, uh, you know, half an hour, an hour, you can kind of get the idea quite quickly. So that's generally what, the way that I've been working anyway, is just been kind of starting off and then I'll find a preset that I kind of quite like. Um, and then I will completely change it. Um, and then I will go in and muck about with uh, the samples. So what you can do is, so I'll, I'll, I'll bring up Cinematic Threat, which is completely um, instruments only. Because um, even within the categories, so even within instruments, you're going to have other things in it. So even though we're in instruments banks, um, you can see that they don't always, well, for instance, that first one doesn't has, has a line of bases. Um, and like I said, sometimes they will have other things in them. Like for instance, that's got um, noise, bass, and synths. So, but it's still under instruments because it's got three rows of instruments. So if we go to um, synths, um, and we'll have a look at some of my um, favorites, hopefully there'll be some there. Yeah, so synths, so there you've got voices, bass, and instruments within the synths as well. But generally I've kind of been going through the banks individually and just playing around. So.
Right, so we'll have a look at uh, Cinematic Threat and uh, I'll just show you. So that's what we are getting. And the mod feels sharp, the shape and the uh, pressure. Um, right, so like I said, the, the, the first way that you can change this completely is just to hit this and it will randomize everything so it's gone completely out of the genre of of synths and you've got bass and vocals i don't really uh, do that and i don't really see the point because you want you you want to be staying in this kind of genre so the first thing that i've normally been doing is going into samples and then picking something else so for instance we could have uh, voices and uh, basses and just click randomize once and then see what you get so you can randomize both ways so you can randomize so this 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 sort of dice will randomize the whole thing but within this kind of genre or you can randomize vertically or horizontally so if i click that it will randomize um those four and if i randomize that it would randomize that whole row of six so each key is now playing a different set of four samples. And what normally what normally happens is that there's for some reason, and I'm not quite sure why, but normally the first key, like C C3, is generally the best. And I don't know why, but it's happened quite a lot when I've been creating presets. Because I have I have started creating a preset pack. Um, and I think I've done about 30 already. So yeah, so this is what I, this is what I've, this is how I've been working anyway. So what you do is, right, so you can find one, so I like the first one, so I like that one. So what you can do is if you click this spread, it will then spread um, that, that particular preset, uh, four presets across the whole eight. Um, and then you can actually play each one. So that's, I'll, I'll show you the chords. So those are the chords that we've got. Right, so we're quite like that. So if we if we like that, we go back to samples and then apply, and that's it actually applies. So the spread thing is just like a kind of, you know, you can preview it before you, you kind of commit to applying. So, so that's us applied that. So even though you've done this, you can still go in and change. So you, as you can see from the icons, they're all exactly the same. But even though you've done this, you can then still go back in and just randomize one row. So you've got a small bit of variation between the eight chords. And this is kind of how I've been trying to. So like I said, you can kind of So right, so, so say you get one that you don't like. So I don't like that one, right? So so you've got right. So I don't like that one. So you, so you click on the uh, magnifying glass, and it will bring up the presets. So we're in Panther Year One um, for this particular one. You can see it's quite, it is really nicely designed because, like I said, you go uh, and you get a little a preview of Panther Year One there, and it says it's C three. Um, so, so we could, so we could change it to Panther Way and see what that sounds like. So we'll close that down. So that's quite a long. That's not really going to work, is it? It's. So that gives you an idea of what you can go in and then just change. And you can do that with any of these. You could go in, instead of randomizing, you could just go in and change, like, say, every kind of second one or whatever you want. I mean, the like, the, the problem with this is the permutations are so enormous that, I mean, I've been literally spending hours on this, uh, just getting totally immersed in the sound design aspect of it. Um, because, as you know, I, um, I do like a bit of a soundscape. 
uh, when it comes to my sound design presets. Um, and this is, you know, like absolutely fantastic for it. Uh, and if you kind of want to get into sound design um, and, and kind of, you know, are a bit mystified by the whole affair, uh, then this is quite a good way to start because it will allow you to kind of get an idea of what you can do. Apart from um, obviously going in and changing these, you can lock them. So if you, for instance, wanted to lock, I'll say I'll lock three of them and then I'll randomize the rest. So you've got that option as well. You know, you can do the same thing. You could randomize certain ones so we could uh, bring in a bit of uh, variation. Um, so we'll randomize every uh, second bass, for instance. So we'll just try that. <laughs> So it's gone from that bass. So we'll just oh my keyboard's gone again. Um so that's gone from that to that whatever that I can hear it's that low. So you've got quite a bit of change there from that is the standard one that we had. That's kind of various different ways to uh, to use these kind of uh, randomized features. Uh, and that's just on the samples. Um, like I said, we haven't even randomized any chords yet or um, effects. So you can kind of do the same thing. So uh, we can unlock them. And then, like I said, we've kind of, uh, I'm not really happy with that anyway, but so uh, we could undo that and go back to what uh, what we had. So that's kind of quite cool. So once we're happy with this, what I've normally been doing is um, once you kind of get a basic idea, now I start mucking around with the keyboard controls. So um, I would start changing the filter and the shaper and the tone, whatever it is. The filter drifts right up, so we can take that down, we can take the strum down, and we can put some vinyl, some more vinyl in it, and just see what that sounds like. And the t oh, we'll leave the tone at 50 and t we'll leave, put the filter up, uh, we'll leave the elite filter at 50% as well. And just bring the volume up a wee bit. Yeah, so quite like that. So, um, right, so I want to save that now. So we go up here and we go to File and Save As. So all my presets are DTC something or other. We'll call it Blue Cello for argument's sake. And we'll, we'll save that. Uh, and that's it. So that, uh, that has now been added to my presets. So if I um, take that favorites off and go up to my presets you can see that within the instruments so blue cello so if i go back to instruments and then so and relaunch cinema threat so you can see we've, that was the original piece of it. so we've gone from that uh, to that Um, whatever, however long that's been, five minutes or something like that. So we'll go to we'll go to synths, for instance, and right, we'll go to beginnings. That's, sounds more like a song. Right. So, like I said, we haven't really looked at um, effects. So this is the other th that you completely um, randomise and will change. The whole sound of the preset. So, like I said, this is very play series. Uh, like I said, you've got um, you've got the different sections. You've got your ARP, uh, and then you've got all these different um, kind of presets there. So you can zag up, zag down, uh, zigzag in, move in, move out, uh, whatever you want. And then you've got a lo-fi. You've got filter, uh, EQ, reverb, shaper, delay, and limiter. Now, obviously, this is just these are these are specific for this preset. So like I said, you can go in and change them there. 
uh, and you can also drag and drop so you could have the EQ um, right at the end before the limiter and like I said that is exactly how play series works so if you've used any of those it's very similar uh, and then you've got your uh, ADSR there so we could you know bring in some attack decay um, whatever and then you've got the humanize bit so you've got panning uh, velocity start time of the kind of samples uh, and then you've both you've got uh, two LFOs there so you've got different waves so you've got uh, the usual sine triangle square sawtooth random and smooth random uh, and then like I said you've got other things like children as well which is one of the effects so I'll play this as this so we'll randomize this and just see what happens And you can see this is so it's picked a it's picked a grain. So if we if we click on this, it will show you. So that is you've got two hundred and seventeen presets, and you can let's say this is in the cinematic genre. So you've got lo-fi cinematic, experimental, and simple, and the, your user ones. So that I haven't done any user ones yet, but because um, I kind of keep forgetting to save them when I've been mucking about with it. So you can see just by changing the effects preset, we've we've completely changed that without even touching the samples. So if we go back, so that's what we had. So yeah, so like I said, if you uh, you just need to remember uh, in cinematic debris valley and you can go back to what you were so that is quite cool quite, quite like that can maybe bring up the attack so if we go back so the other thing which like I said, we can do is, is just randomize the chord patterns made it worse so we're in A minor so we could change that uh, to uh, D minor haven't touched the samples this is just a change in the chords and the effects and we've got a completely different sound and then if you want to just click this and completely change the samples so you've got the same effects and chords and chords but just completely new set of samples and which are still all synths bringing in the flare so yeah so that gives you a pretty good idea just a couple of different ways of playing around with these and like I said the good thing is that once you've even once you've kind of created this whole thing like I said if we want we can just go in and randomize those in fact let's just change this to voices and randomize that and just see what we get for argument sake Let's 
we haven't done noises yet, have we? We'll put in noises and we'll randomize that. And I don't know why, I don't know why they've done noises as this kind of like fluffy dice. I think it should be something more metallic. <laughs> So like I said, you can, you kind of got crackling, kind of got a little hum. More crackling. That's terrible. So, all right, we'll better keep the crackle and we'll just, we'll just apply that to the whole thing again. So if I want to change the volume on this, um, I can, I just click on that, um, and then uh, we've got volume, and then I can take the volume down uh, on, the, on that, crack it, and then apply that across the whole range. For instance, you could, you could change the volumes on some of these, so that you get more variation. So you can see, oh, um, yeah. So we could go to volume, and then, like I said, you could just you could change some of these around. You could bring up some, down, some down, whatever you want. And it's the same with the panning and the octaves. So you can see that first one's a bit quieter. So there we go. So that is a qu a quick. I say quick. It's gone on for far too long. Um, that is quick. Well, there's no there's no kind of way of doing this quickly. So, but that is a, that's the kind of quickest overview of Playbox. Um, and like I said, I'm going to do quite a few more videos. I'll play through some of my presets, uh, and I'll also bring in samples and MIDI and whatever, and uh, show you how that works. Um, so anyway, so hopefully, like I said, um, I, if you are going to get anything in this year's Summer of Sound. Um, I would get this as as you can see it is possibly um, one of the best new apps that Native Instrument have brought out for, for all. So, anyway, so thanks for watching and as usual if you are enjoying my videos please like, subscribe, share and comment um, and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.